with this pick. Hey, I'm always gonna hold out the hope that it's gonna be a flex. You know, no, no cluster for the, for the, you know, she throws some in shenanigans for like a support Wukong. That's trash, by the way, don't do it. Uh, but I'm always a fan of the possibility of the top jungle flex, so I will always keep that in my mind as a possibility here. Uh, Gwen had been really the most picked top laner for the most part, a very high win rate there as well. Um, so gonna be locked in there. We really don't see your jungle flex at all, so I'm just gonna take that one no matter what, whether you like the Wukong matchup or you're gonna blind pick it, that's in for Bin. And I think this rotation just makes so much sense for the side of RNG. These are the two best blind pick champions in their roles, especially with the fact that RNG have banned out the LeBlanc. The two champions we've seen come out to answer the Ari is the, the Vagar, which you don't really have the same presence in the early game. We did see in the last game, though, if it goes late enough, sure, you can have a massive impact. In Vex as well, it's like, sure, you can match the, the proactivity, but I feel like Ari is just such a pick with so many diverse options. I'm glad to see G2 going okay. in another direction. Goes for the Zoe, so Cap's gonna go for an early aggressive champion. Certainly can be laying down. It's gonna be an exciting matchup to watch for on that one for sure. As we look to see what their third pick's gonna be before the band phase comes in. Are you answering a top laner? Are you going to let RNG throw more bands at it to make Gwen feel happy? We've seen Vladimir frequently be the option. And it's going to happen here again. Broken Blade uh, just destroyed Impact with it back in the group stage. You can try to do the same thing against Bin here. And already setting up for such a good team fight 5v5 comp, right? Wukong with the knockup trying to set up for Vlad for a huge ultimate and burst out the carries from the side of RNG. Now for RNG, you'd expect the jungle to come out, highlighting the Ezreal right now, having confidence in Wei. And Wei's had a bit of a shaky year, which is pretty surprising when it felt like he was the, the big playmaker, the big standout for RNG last year. In the regular split in playoffs, he really did depend on that Viego is a crutch to give him good performances. But no, they're going to go with the Ezreal and they're going to put faith in their jungler. Yeah, I mean, how long till the Volver comes back? You know, that's, <laughs> no, that's the no. real... <laughs> Emily is cringing in the back yeah. listening right now. Yeah, and it's not because of a pun. It's because I'm talking about a player, you know, straight up. Uh, so we'll see what comes through. Tristana off the table. She has definitely had the stocks go up and to the right. Uh, very strong champ for sure. Uh, a, a lane bully with, you know, a solid late game. Um, and... You know, okay, not not good for that one. Of course, Ezreal, uh, not most capable early on. Uh, and honestly, you can pretty heavily out-trade him. If you're going to put in spells, you can put him back. So, uh, okay, off for that one, no problem there. And there's that Viego. You mentioned it, first things first. That was the one we care about, and G2 cares about it too. Yeah, and I'm really curious to see where RNG go from here. We, we have so many, I'd say, all-in style champions in the bot lane right now in this meta. Tristan obviously being taken away. We've seen yep. some Kamira, Samira, Kalista already being taken off the table. But G2 have also been more interesting in terms of the 80 carries they picked here. They still do have the Kai'Sa. If RNG don't opt to ban that one, they've already played it twice. We've seen them being one of the teams still willing to pick the Zeri after the millions and millions of nerfs yeah. she has received. And yeah, they're, they're going to leave pretty much everything open, caring more about that Senna. And Senna Wukong's the thing. That is the thing that Europe specifically kind of pioneered. I love Senna Wukong, by the way. I'm actually a really big fan of playing Senna more as a support and letting the bot lane farm champion like, be more of a carry than just like, well, I'm a Tom Kench and I built two tank items and it's like <laughs> that's nice the you know like I, i'm a huge fan of playing something like a wukong or if you're gonna go really spicy like a yasuo yasuo senna by the way great lane uh highly recommend just fyi just try it out in solo queue if you know how to play yasuo great duo overall lee sin got the option though and i'm loving this one uh, did get some nerfs haven't seen the most lee sin recently since those nerfs came through but Fun champ. Yep, his base AD got nerfed as well as yeah. his Q damage being taken down a little bit. Things that not only hurt his clear, but also his gank. So just all around being hit. We've seen him a little bit. I think he's been played six times so far in this tournament. Way gonna try once again. You have a very strong mid jungle duo right now. Ari with the charm to sit up for the Lee Sin now for G2. I feel like this is typically where we do get a little bit more spicy. The Kai'Sa is something there we've already is. highlighted that I feel like Flacket has looked very comfortable on. You have a composition with the Wukong right now that can just dive into that back line. And I'd love to see more engaged to follow up in this support role. Luckily for RNG, they aren't going to have to worry about the Pike since they've taken that one away. That pick scares the living crap out of me. Oh, sure. Maybe, you know, Leona, Nautilus, Rel, the, the kind of go-tos we've been seeing all day long. Actually, Nautilus. Not so much. Shot a ton in the first yeah. stage, but no. But but he was, I believe, the highest priority support. Oh, you know, across the first stage. Yes, he had kind of waned off. I give you that one. But gonna go for it here instead. He still has the reliable engage tool. You've still got a point and click R. Ezreal cannot disjoint it. Ari cannot disjoint it. Lee Sin can't disjoint it. Okay, Gwen is immune. Uh, but if you want to get in on most of that roster, it's going to happen there. Uh, Flak can always follow through. Broken Blade, right? Like that. You're gonna have the follow up there. So, uh, I, you know, I think this all works out pretty well. Leonardo, I've seen this a hundred thousand times. 
<laughs> you know, you can interrupt each other's engages and, you know, kind of disengage together. Yeah, and I find these two drafts very curious. Uh, RNGs, I think, is a, a little bit more standard in terms of you have a lot of different options you can play out. Like, they, they have a strong 5v5, they have the Ezreal to, to carry, they have great frontline in the Gwen and the Leona. They have some pick potential in sides with the fact that they will have both Ari and Gwen there as compared to the, compared to the Zoe on the opposite side. So for G2, you have kind of pseudo all in with Vlad, Wukong, Kai'Sa, Nautilus, and then the Zoe who doesn't really follow that same play pattern, but at least can contest pressure mid in the early game. Yeah, I, I think uh, one thing that that Jat told me when he was, you know, coaching Team Liquid um, and, you know, turned their ninth place around into a finals, you know, great, you know, smart man. Uh, basically, the, the goal is you want two lanes of priority and better scaling. If you have that, you've won the draft, right? More pressure than them, better late game than them. That's everything you kind of care about because you can play the game plan, you know, early game and late game. Can you contest Ari late, early game as Zoe? Yes, you can. Can the bot lane duo win? That's a close one, but you yep. can, right? If you play yep. well enough, that, that's actually your two on two on either side of the matchup. So, you know, very skill matchup there, I think. Um, but, you know, you got AOE clear on the on the Kai's that can feel pretty solid. Um, and yeah, I love Wukong and Vladimir team fights, right? Scaling I love Kai's team side. fights. So, um, right, like on the G2 side, you kind of got everything you want. Like, yep. I, this is not like a 100 0, oh, you slammed like the draft, but like, you look at it and you're like, I'm comfortable with this draft. If, if, I'm, if I'm comfortable with my players, I'm a confident my players, I like this draft. Especially, I mean, if you find the engage, right? If you find the engage, I feel like G2 should just be outright favored, having so much. AOE having Flacken with the ability to reposition, get himself on top of that Ezreal, and having the point and click CC Nautilus that we didn't see earlier on in the day when RNG played to punish that pick. Absolutely. So here we go on to the Rift, the only remaining undefeated teams at MSI 2022. G2 shocked the world, maybe not the EU analysts, but shocked everyone else with the win over T1. Earlier, RNG took care of business against EG, and now we'll see what else they can have happen because G2 dropped their win streak, or does RNG now take over the number one spot? Yeah, and I think for G2, one of the, the areas where they're really going to outshine RNG is the early game. Uh, RNG's early game pretty much all year long has been a little bit suspect. We saw in playoffs in the LPL top esports gap them pretty much every game and rely on these crazy 20, 25 minute comebacks, throws from the sides of top esports. We saw in RNG's game earlier today, it was, you know, a little bit slower. They, they were accruing advantages for macro. And I feel like G2 are a team who are willing to slam their foot on the gas oh, pedal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, G2 are, are the faster team of these two, for sure. Uh, I mean, Sahu just provides so much. It's funny, his interview earlier, he's like, yeah, I learned more about being like the engage on the team, which I don't think is that useful as a mid laner. Honestly, he's not Doin B, right? <laughs> he's not saying Doin B, Nautilus from Alpha. <laughs> it's useful. <laughs> yeah, if only he, you know, like that, that, you know, some mid laners do that. But I mean, Ari certainly, uh, I mean, Sahu is mobile. Like, this man is, is everywhere. He runs around. He does get a lot done. So that, to me, like, he's the X Factor for the early game. Yeah, and I feel like the Deaths did a really good job of highlighting that it's two very distinct play styles. Shout's going to be all about enabling your side lanes, kind of covering for some of their, their weaknesses, especially been up in that top side. To where for G2, it's all about getting Caps ahead. Caps even able to do him do that for himself, as we saw in some of the outplays, like him on the Yasuo uh, earlier in the tournament. Just some really nice plays. So Cap's going to be looking to be the big carry to where Xiaohu is going to be looking to enable sides. Like you said, I, I think the spot lane matchup can have a bit of volatility. There is some skill there, so that would be a place where I wouldn't mind for RNG to look to put their emphasis. Even for G2, you have Vlad scaling and chilling up in the top side. If yep. you can get Black in ahead, if you can unlock this Kai'Sa, it's going to be massive. Well, no stacks left for either tank support here, and it looks like the wave control is going to go to RNG, so you got to back off. Playing far enough back that, I mean, Basically, Gala can't land E on an enemy champion if he goes forward, so it's just like a missed shot and auto attack, and G2 can kind of comfortably fight that one. We are in Glacial Augment meta for most of the supports. We do have Aftershock and Targums, by the way, but um, like level 2 Leona doesn't have her W and doesn't have Aftershock. So if she jumps in, Ezreal can Q auto. You just trade back on her with Aftershock Nautilus, and you actually win that one, level 1 to level 2. I mean, especially Halo Blades on the Kai'Sa, right? Exactly, yeah. right? You actually just pop, you just like pop Plasma on her. You actually win that trade, so you saw G2 actually stand their ground with level deficit, because the matchup the way it actually plays out with rune choices, they're fine with that one under the mini wave. Yeah, so our, so far G2's bot lane playing this very intelligently. Interesting to see Xiaohu get the early recall. Gonna come back, have the Dark Seal, have a Corrupt and Potion, so can look for a bit more of these aggressive traits. And that's what we hit on a draft, right? When you pick something like the Ari with the Lee Sin, you typically want to see those ganks towards the mid lane, even if you can't find a kill. If you can burn Caps' Flash, make it so he can't play more aggressively, he can't look to push out the wave, or join in these river skirmishes where Zoe is just so good at picking up spells used, looking for creative angles with your bubbles, I feel like that's really what's gonna open up RNG for success. So look to punish Caps. If Caps gets through landing phase unscathed, I'd be pretty scared from RNG. 
Nice try. And the, ooh, it's a turret shot. Almost landed the Everfrost. Would have been a little bit of a nice trade into the sleep, but it doesn't happen. Uh, one camp ahead basically for Yankos. He's finishing up Scubble just now uh, and heads around to find his next goal. He did skip Krugs, by the way. It was a full clear for the Lee Sin, uh, who's actually now his own camp ahead. I take it back. Temporarily, there was an advantage, but uh, as Wei is on the map level four, he's going to say, okay, this man skipped Krugs. I know his camp path. I know what he did. Uh, all right, I'll get my second recall. Yankos will kind of catch up, and now he's on the map with double longsword. Yeah, and I'm curious to see where Wade goes now with this information, right? Because he knows that Yanko's going to be heading towards his Krugs right now. You see that Bint has a control ward up the top side, so potentially can look for some kind of gank. Vlad can be pretty hard to gank. You have the W available, also still has his Ghost up to be able to escape. But if the wave was on his side, potential option for Bint is going to push that one out. And RNG, once again, just kind of opting for a bit of a slower early game. Yeah, not going to be much to do. Honestly, without a lot of hard CC, it's it's pretty tough to force the Broken Blade yeah. death. You have to, like, go in, force the pool to try again in 20 seconds. At the most, you get the ghost, but yeah. that's probably the best you're looking at. And, and and if you do that, okay, come back in three minutes and maybe you convert the kill. But, uh, you know, either Ben has to trade so well to get some down to, like, 30%, where he pools the Q, you, like, follow, land E, and then you, then you kind of finish the tower dive. But that's what you have to do. Ignite, I, he's, looking, I like he's looking for it right now. I mean, it's a smart Ignite because it, it, it printed the big heal from Empowered Q, which is why he's low enough to be diveable, and that means he's gonna have to drop two waves, and it's it's a cheap as Vladimir. It's really, really well done by Ben. Freak, is your game 15 seconds ahead of mine? Because <laughs> you, you kind of painted that picture way too well for what we saw happen. I play enough top players to know like how Vladimir matchups go, and it's like it's actually his health bar that matters. And it's so tough to play the matchup right because like if you do it wrong, he just hits you with airy scorch Q auto, and you're like, well, his health bar is bigger than mine. But if you get it right, he's at 20% and he's now tower diverable. So really, really well done by Ben. That can be a tough matchup, but he played it really nicely. Yeah, now though, Broken Blade can back with those Lucidity Boots. So gonna be able to get that Q off even more. Just get, keep the sustain going and not let Ben continue to bully him out because he does have a bit of a lead right now, especially with the fact that Broken Blade was zoned off the wave. So missing out on quite a bit. But it opened up G2 to be able to take control of topside jungle because they knew where Wei was. They knew he was posturing for that play. And Targamas and Yankos right now just kind of looking to be a little bit cheeky, but RNG not going to give them any windows. And how much going to happen right now? 200 gold lead to RNG. Feels pretty good right now. Uh, bot lane's looking pretty normal. Uh, feels pretty good to get a Sheen tier recall, so I think Gala is going to feel definitely comfy down there. Flacking on boots, okay, no problem. And yeah, we're, we're just kind of chilling for a bit. Dragon, of course, is up. RNG, very dragon focused as a team. If they can kind of have that one stacked, then they're really happy at 30 minutes where it's like, all right, well, we're online with three items. You have to fight fight us for it or we're getting solo. And pins work out for them pretty well. They, of course, won the LPL. Here we go. Nice anchor comes in. Aftershock's on, still wants to dodge away from the charm, flashes to stay alive. Ultimately, still summon her down. So well done by Ming. Yeah, RNG moving their bot lane over first. Gala conceding that wave. Ming was already here. G2 still looking for a bit, but ultimately just find a, a nice bit of trade back and get the scuttle crap for themselves. That is where it's going to taper off. Ultimately, though, like you said, in favor of RNG, they were able to get Targamus' flash out from him. Targamus also not even going hex flash, so his actual flash being down really does stymie his engage capabilities. In general, Leona's going to be mostly fine as real if he's paying attention to Kanarki's shift, so probably doesn't mean too much with that down regardless, but. Uh, gonna keep note of that one, that he's certainly a relatively easy target for the next four minutes. One turret plate down, well done to Broken Blade, holds his 6 CS lead. Should lose most of that as this goes down. So even though he's pushed out of lane once, has done a good job with lane pressure. Yeah, and I mean, again, it should be really cool to see G2 being willing to so confidently go towards these picks. But I'll pause for a second because Wei kind of angling for a gank. Vlad has ultimate up, still has W and Ghost as well. Is it going to be enough? There's Ghost. Disjoints the Q damage, jumps towards the wall. Flash kick is beautiful. Big heal comes in, Ignite on. Broken Blade will get shut down. Way burns the cooldowns and burns the top part of the ground. I love the confidence coming out from Way in that play. Follows up, it kind of looked like Broken Blade might have been able to get away. Uses the Ghost, has a W available. Yeah. Way holding on to the Flash, though. And once again, Broken Blade going to be denied even more CS. Yeah, big thing is he needs to hold his W for Q1, not Q2. The man still takes the return trip if you wait until he starts it. So uh, kind of a mistake there for Broken Blade, not kind of playing out the fight in his head. Either way, though, credit due to RNG's jungler. Way sets it up, and it's been knocking it down. So off to the races is a Gwen, and that makes team fights scary. Yes, especially for RNG when, when we've talked about how volatile Bin has been as a player, how he's constantly looking for these heavy trades, needs a little bit of babysitting from the teams that he's on. Nice to see him get off to a lead, but G2 still gonna use his timer. They know Way's gonna have to go for the reset to turn that in onto a play for Harold. Now Flack, you're gonna have to be a little bit careful. We see Way hovering around a bot side right now. 
Yeah. And I think Yanko is actually on the minimap reset the Herald. Yeah, he did. So he, he uh, ran the patience out on Shelly, had to go for round two in this one. It cost him like 15 seconds. I think RNG getting this dragon anyway. A uh, very minor mistake. It shouldn't mean much, but this is, there's the dragon for RNG. Exactly what we kind of talked about. Uh, Emily talked about it after their win over EG. Targamus, nicely timed, gets the Q out of the turret, gets away from Solar Flare, and level disparity not going to matter. Yeah, it looks like RNG is still going to posture for this at least. We can see on the minimap, Shao who's moving down. Ult doesn't hit though. Yeah, no ults for anyone right now. Every single thing is down. Aftershock is on. They're just going to burn Ming to the ground. Flacka dives away. They're going to trade one back at least, but still well done by the G2 bot lane. 1v3. Shao goes in. A flash going away. Wei can't find the Q just yet. He's going to get it at the end. Oh, Caps. Have the rest. Caps cannot land it, but the turret will. Minions are in the place. Now Caps has his own flash, has an extra one to chase down. Will he go for it? Health bar is low. One more auto will kill. The kick back though, does Shahu have enough though is the question. Caps gonna try for more battle stars. Shahu very low on mana is a thing. It's gonna be an auto attack fight now. So Caps, oh if that sleep landed, he might have gotten the kill here. Shahu now gonna maybe walk away. Paddle Star will not quite kill. Good sidestep. Yanko's on the way. He's stealth. And a flash to safety knew that hold on, this could be a threat. Well done by Caps buying the time, forcing a flash out of Shahu. Constantly seeing Caps be the difference maker. Follows the roam, finds the outplay, picks up a bunch of kills for himself. I'm a little bit disappointed that Yanko joined in at the end. I would have loved to see the 1v1 between two such historic mid laners, but you know what? We'll take it. Yeah, I, to be fair, the, he was invisible when Sao flashed away, okay? True. It could be a pro view and you're like, oh yeah, he flashed from 1v1. Cass got it by himself, but obviously a good move by Yankos and yeah, I, I think we're going to see more soon, don't worry. Yeah, and we see here RNG setting up, having about one wave. Uh, Chao Hu posturing down, but that's the thing, not all members are here right now, so Ming going in a little bit before anyone's able to follow up. Really nice burst coming out from G2's bot lane to take him down right away. They want to keep this one going, they want to be able to find the kill, it's a 3v1 right now, but Flacken with a really nice pop of his R, able to buy more time for Caps to get down here. Like you highlighted, Freak, Turret kind of took that one down, but Caps being able to pick up these summoners makes it so he can keep following up on the play. Hits the Electrocute, dodges out oh. from Shao Hu, and that's how he's able to get it done. That Q not landing, a really big deal. Caps kept going to the right. I don't know if he was predicted juke or not, but either way, Sonic Wave's not going to come through. Wait! Oh, oh, man! Caps is just so damn good. Yankos gets away. The clone helps tank some of Shao Hu's damage. True shot barrage! Woo! He felt that on his tail. He was so close. I. I, I Azale said it the other day on Dive for you that Caps has been the best performing mid at the tournament. I think it's pretty unarguable. Hard to and agree. And he's showing it once again here today. A little bit to the sadness of me being an LPL <laughs> caster, but when you see plays this amazing, you, you can't help but just love it and be excited. Oh my gosh. Caps is, Caps is on another level. He tore through everyone in the LEC. I mean, just, I don't want to say put G2 on his back. His team is obviously very good, but clearly the best performing player right now in Europe and the best performing player right now in the world. Yeah. And that is awesome to see 3-0 right now on the Zoe. Right, Not a lot of other players are really picking this champion. He's clearly making it work. Beautiful stuff to see. And now, let's see what happens on next. And now RNG looking for a bit of a play themselves up towards the top side. Nice shot, Caps hovering towards his jungler. They're not going to open up any potential opportunities to come through. I'm curious to see how much gold Caps is sitting on, what he comes back to in lane. Uh, could have so much pressure now coming out from mid that G2 might just be able to constantly look for these rotations on the sides into enemy jungle. Yeah, about a 1k gold lead in the mid lane, having his mythic already. Yeah, that 1k gold lead paid back by the top jungle of RNG, so we do see in the scoreboard it's a tied game here, just sort of marketing like who's got the leads, right? It's, it's capped big up for G2, it's the top side big up for RNG, and they're gonna try again right here. Three, four versus one, Broken Blade, what can you immune? They're gonna walk up for the stun, then chain everything. W comes down, Ming has the turret dagger, has to walk away at night. Good stopwatch finds the kill, and turrets uh, will just switch back to the minions. So a well played dive by RNG, they lose a stopwatch for it, but the kill is worth it, as now G2 fight through the side. And I mean, they are a thousand damage away from Shelly finishing this turret for them. Yeah, just really nice cross mapping coming out from the side of G2. They realize they can't look for this, go down towards the bottom, side. They don't need to commit Caps. It looks like Caps is being ganked right now. He is. So there comes the damage, but he's going to be just fine. Targamus putting a lot of space there as well. Caps going to trade back on the gal. Targamus will go down. Oh. No, the flash to safety. 15 health left. And Shao, who cannot find that kill. First turret went to G2, traded back by Bin, but the Herald charge went on a bot too. That's going to be like 800 gold waiting to be claimed pretty soon by Broken Blade or Yankos. And I, I think that's just so tragic that Shao is not able to find the kill because it means G2 able to get the second charge off unpunished. Now Shao who doesn't have ultimate, so even if he does roam down to cover the bottom side, they can't look for an aggressive play that maybe they would have been able to otherwise. And G2 now coming out a little bit ahead in terms of gold, but it really has felt like they've been the ones with the pressure so far. 
Yeah, ultimately, Shelly, right, until that bottom lane turret dies, and this is valuable, right? The fact that it crashed and that, that's not very useful. Until that turret dies, though, there is no, like, intrinsic yep. difference in G2 standing. At some point, it is plus 800, it is plus that pressure. The, the crash matters, but, right, both teams got all five plates. Both teams still killed the turret, Shelly or not. So, uh, even though the tempo was better for G2 and they got 150 for the first turret, you know, RNG answered it pretty well. I even feel like solidly on that point, G2 don't have anyone who really plays out through the side lanes and, and wins, especially with the advantage that it has. Yeah. So, probably not something you're going to capitalize on anytime soon. But right now, Dragon set up coming out from both teams. G2's comp doing really well in this with the Zoe, but Way Ooh. looking for some aggression. Yeah, okay, out he goes. No sleep gonna land as he jumps back away. No problem there. Flash up, kick up. Huge damage to the Gala down to about 60%. Couple of slows coming across. Re-engage, caps down low now as well. But Ming is gonna be taking a nap. Is it gonna be in the dirt? It looks like no. We'll stay above ground for this Shao one, Ooh. but hold on. We're waiting for the next one. Yeah, Shao not yet going over the wall. Flash, ult, charm, all that's gonna be up, so can make the play. G2 grouped up, and Ming, I think, has to take his reset. So 5v4 is an opportunity. Nice try in the Gala. Arcane shifts out. Yeah, who's still going to wait? Caps has a, you know, mini ignite, basically. Yeah, th this posture is really interesting, right? Because you have Zoe on one side, able to throw out these bubbles and the Qs over the wall, but Gala also being able, on the edge, able to poke them out. RNG not going to get this one up, but Ming yeah. isn't here. This would be a 4v5. Wei can get in and get out if he wants to. Just go for the smite fight. Down to 900. Claimed. Well done by Caps. And now we look at round two. That's going to be Gwen coming in. Drowsy, though, in melee range. Caps ignited, but finds the root. He keeps running away. And now he's left alone. Nicely done by Flack. He jumps right in. And Broken Blade gets his revenge. Dragon, kill number one. Looking for number two as well. In again, Broken oh. Blade. Sets up a lot of space. They get number two. That sweep might make it hard to run away now as well. RNG is going to go ahead and walk away, lick at their wounds. G2 getting everything they wanted. Yeah, G2 taking the fight, getting the objective as well. A lot of summoners being burnt by their side. RNG not really having to burn any because, I mean, they were the ones looking for the play, right? Bin having to go in by himself. A lot of zoning coming out from Broken Blade. Ming not even in the play yet, but RNG still thinking they had the angle. Sadly, though, they didn't want to go straight into the replay here. We see them able to secure the dragon and Bin crude. Critically, if I yeah. can speak, looking for the flank, it does get bubbled, and then here the Everfrost coming out stops him from going in. Mm. RNG try to find their way onto Flacken, but really nice ult to be able to get away, not trade a one for one. But like you said here, Broken Blade and Targamas being the ones to buy space, so RNG can follow up with the engage. Yeah, I mean, everyone just like ran away. Like that was, I think it was the last uh, jump from Xiaohu, like what, you know, ran away from uh, the the E charge and the Vladimir, like. Even though he didn't hit anyone, he, yeah, exactly what you said, right? Buying space, there was no re-engage. That is the power of a mid-game Vladimir. He's on a rocket belt. He's going for, you know, the high damage, backline access, bursty build sort of there. And now another fight in the bottom side. Yanko's reveal not going to matter. Bubble's not going to land. Neither will the Sonic Wave. But second Herald going to be under fire. And RNG feeling tough with this one. Broken Blade spotted in the yep. bot lane, pushing the wave. So RNG should say, hey, it's fight before we should try. Way getting a bit low, though. Does not have Smite right now for the heal. Yankos does, so RNG cannot really play this as they play it slower and slower. We're gonna have Broken Blade in this fight, so RNG can't actually go for it. No, RNG gonna have to back off. We saw the poke able to come out from Caps, get the damage down. And just the posturing coming out from G2 able to zone them off. Uh, even if RNG had the smite, the smite there, I think it would have been very risky to commit for the objective with how fast Broken Blade was able to follow up. So G2 once again picking up another objective. Mid lane turret also very low, so I would be surprised to see G2 angle for a time to, to look to group mid. Okay, Kaz putting one skill shot out for a slow. Charm only hits the clone. Yanko's doing a good job of making sure he can dodge those. It's instantaneous. You know, you are, even on 35 ping, it's one frame. Like, that that's the timing, so... Uh, Pretty reliable to get away from that one. And now Ben gonna jump right in. Sees Flack at no CC, but maybe baits him in anyway. And now as TV's come across, will it be enough? Zoe's in melee range and finds kill number one. And there's no way out. Xiaohu is death number two. RNG tried way too hard to kill themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was such a confusing play coming out from RNG. Ben going in saying, hey, Xiaohu can follow up as a TP. And RNG still posturing. Might find this. Yeah, combos it out. Nicely done away. Gets the Gore Trigger and the E across. So at least one kill traded back. Good solo. But of course, two to one, still in the extended play. G2 feeling good, and Shelly, well, that's gonna be second turret. Yeah, G2 should be able to get this one. RNG gonna have to rotate up to stop a second charge from being able to come through. They'd already cleared the wave in mid, so not too much ring on this front, but a TP coming out from Bin. Oh, they're gonna try yet again, all right. Okay, if you don't succeed, oh, way! I think that was purely blind, beautifully done. Solo kill on a flacket. Majai is picked up for caps. That's exciting, no other kills. Yeah. I love the confidence coming out from him with how spectacular of a game he's had so far. He just wants to keep bringing this one home right now, sitting almost a 3k gold lead up over RNG. It feels like the next objective we're going to be looking at is that dragon coming up in a minute 30. 
Uh, so far, Waves being pushed out and controlled bot side for the side of G2. Bin pushing that one in the top, so someone from G2 will, someone from RG, uh, going to push that one in. G2 will have to answer, and G2 now going to be able to keep control over this bottom side river. The mid comes in, 60% health on that turret. It's honestly just feeling pretty comfortable. 2500 gold, solid lead for sure. Watch that fight yet again. Is yeah, I think Ben just calls his teammates over, but doesn't realize the rest of them are already on the way. Yeah, so he, he goes to get that, that D4 right, doesn't realize G2's pretty much already here. Shahu TPing into his death. Does look a little bit troll, but like you said, I can kind of understand what, what they were looking for. And then Wei being sneaky, I think Target Mouse not thinking they'd still be posturing around mid, considering they just lost a fight. Able to find a cheeky kill in the back half. He kind of spaced it out nicely as well, right? The, the sort of tail end of the knockback and stun, he's still in range for the Gore Drinker and uh, the E. So it kind of like hits Q2, ends up like 300 units out. But like, that's fine, because that's still in range of all your spells. So even yep. just like on a very small micro-mechanical level, uh, pretty much perfectly timed by way, no way to flash out or anything. So nicely done there. Uh, still though, relatively close game, 2500. Uh, obviously, G2 are commanding in this one, but if you look at the bottom river, fight for the third dragon of the game, and it's RNG who have the first move. They've got at least some mid pressure, and they've got the wards. Yeah, I, I like that we're seeing the two teams go in different directions, right? RNG knowing they can win the contest over mid wave with the Ezreal, they already had members there first. So G2 quickly go down towards spot side to make sure they still have an avenue into the river. And it feels like, once again, it's going to devolve into this poke battle, right? How much can caps get done compared to Gala on the other side stopping members from coming in? G2, though, just going to go straight towards the dragon. Him started up. Brooklyn's still going to play on mid, but he kind of wants to be in a flank spot in the first place. Bruce Rigga spots okay. I know where the back line has gone. We know what's going on there. Ming not spotted a kick from behind. Really? Ooh. Just beautiful by way. They will sack the dragon. But until it turns into soul, the kill's probably worth more. Mid? Yeah, exactly. Mid pressure's a thing. They can rush down this turret, and a kill in a turret is better than second dragon. Yeah, 100% RNG. Really nice play there. I can emphasize with what both teams are doing, right? G2, I mean, they couldn't contest mid, uh, mid wave. They had to go through bot. That's how they found their avenue onto the objective. But wait, with just a really nice read. And I love that, that they knew they had the confidence that they'd be able to burst out Broken Blade right away, that he wouldn't be able to get to pull and get out of there. And now RNG still not equalizing the gold, but keeping it close enough. Yeah, I mean, it went from, you know, over 2,500 to about 1,700, so it is at least getting closer. I still, of course, favor G2, and they're not going to go <laughs> the dragon. Keep in mind, a, a, not even a, yeah, a, a stolen smite for Caps, actually, yep. not even Spellbook, just got it from the ground, so puts a little bit of damage down there in the first place. Oh, so and, fast! I mean, 1,800 damage together. Way might spot it soon. Q over the wall, sees it, timing's going to be tight. Double spike! Oh, they don't go for it! He gets it in time. He goes able to claim it. Out goes Way. That was nearly a barren snipe, but it's not going to happen. A good sneak all the same. Cap's going to walk away clean. Lee Xiao, who cannot really get in. Keep in mind, they've still got Gwen push to the bottom side. Bot lane outer is down. We'll attack tier two as Broken Blade attempts to answer equal level close CS the two of them. And this is just such a great day for the European fans. Yeah. I'm sad Vettis couldn't be here because, my god, G2 are completely showing up. Everyone's saying T1's the favorite. RNG, G2 being that similar second tier. But I think most people probably would still lean RNG just from, you know, the dominance of LPL over the past few years. Yeah, sure. But G2 completely showing up today. And I mean, now with this Baron, we're going to see how much it can increase his gold lead. Tier 1 mid still up for RNG. Gala not going to be able to just clear out these waves like he's been doing all game. G2, get control of side, start moving towards mid, break this one down as a unit. See them try it yet again. I think Smite's actually only up for caps. Smite, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, no, okay, it was up for Wukong, I take it back. But the double smite comes through. Uh, I believe that was, yeah, that was that was Zoe plus Wukong. Time, not the closest together, but still got it. Uh, still the double smite in time. Yep, still good enough for Wei not to be able to look for the contest there. Again, just the decisiveness coming out from G2 was huge. This is what we talked about. They just pushed in top wave, they pushed in bot. They're going to make these plays towards mid. And now, I mean, with the amount of siege that they have from the Zoe, they should be able to guarantee this one with the Baron buff. For RNG, their only hope is looking for a cheeky play with Wei. You can see him right now hovering in the bottom side jungle. No but with Finn still not here, yeah. Right, exactly. Just... He's just pulling up Gwen. There is no threat on you whatsoever, and Gwen is like seen on the wave. So Wei could engage a 4v5. It'll be Ming doing it, but Ming just explodes. Now he gets okay, out. Goes. Gallop finds one, and they're gonna go for a little bit more. Now, where's it gonna be? Where's Broken Blade running away? Targamus, no flat kick, gonna get out just barely. A nice kick, but that's one already picked up under the Gwen as Vin does show up with the TP. Coming on for the rest of it, the sleep is there, and Wei will fall.
Look at that, four versus three on the map. G2 still just taking more. Yeah, they still bear. They can still look to keep pushing down these objectives. RG in a really bad place. Caps now picking up the flash. I'm on edge, Freak. I'm on edge. I mean, they're getting so much done, though. G2 playing on the edge at this point. Knock another turret down. Broken Blade, a small ping towards him. Getting farther and farther ahead. 4,000. Now the lead. G2 are commanding this game. Yeah, a really smart rotation, making their way up towards topside. They've already prepped this wave beforehand to go for that push in mid. They're very easily able to use that macro play to pivot up towards the topside, take another turret down, and RNG, I mean, I can understand them, them looking for a play, right? They, they're, they're, they're feeling very far behind. They know they need to find a way back into this game, but yeah, I feel like with the fact that Bin was, was still by the TV MTP, channel would take too yeah. long, like, I get what they're looking for. Ming goes in. I'm very surprised he does not die here. Able to get away by the skin of his teeth. Really nice Everfrost guarantees that Yankos goes down. And then here you see kind of the dichotomy. You see Bin going in, trying to buy space. But on the opposite end of the fight, it's Broken Blade of buying space for his carries to be able to make sure that Wei goes down. Yep. And in the midst of all this fighting, Caps is pretty much hitting every bubble to make sure that the damage wasn't able to follow through. And Broken Blade playing the zoning like role while building for full damage, right? It's it's Rocket Belt into Void Staff Second. It's not the zone. He's not even like a Banshee because you're against, you know, several AP. Like there's a consideration there. And he's still able to build so much time that despite being put down, he's still zoning at the back line, letting them just focus down the Gwen who was put ahead early on. And you, she's one and three now, right? And this is a champion who, right, they gave her so much lane control. They gave her a turret. They gave her a kill. And it just doesn't matter. And I think it's so smart, too, just for the fact that since you know RNG are going to be looking to die at the back line, it's pretty much leaving Gala and then maybe Xiaohu or Ming by themselves to deal with the Vladimir. You don't have enough burst to take down Broken Blade. Even me is going the full damage, full burst build. So that threat alone is enough to dissuade them from looking for these plays. Now RNG going to try and pivot to playing sides, look for picks, but feels rough. I mean, Broken Blade going to be the only one answering waves. Caps continuously holding hands with Yankos or just sitting in mid himself. So those opportunities yeah. really not going to be available. Yep. Third dragon of the game. Going to go to G2 pretty cleanly here. Mountain Soul. Overall, like on, on the average game, the best dragon soul in the game, by the way. Highest win rate, uh, no matter what Elo you look at. Really, really, really strong. Uh, that shield just does so much to prevent comebacks because the, ooh, Ari one-shot you is just precluded by the, you know, 300-point shield and extra armor MR. So uh, this really does hurt RNG's chance to find the comeback. Gold lead grows to 5,000 now. Even just the items, you look at it right oh, now. Yeah. Banshee's Veil on Xiaohu compared to the Void Staff coming out from Caps. So much more damage on their side. Three item AD carry flag. It, having the Phantom Dancer, having the IE as well, compared to only two items on Gala. Feels like RNG are so far away from point in the game of being relevant. Against a comp that also scales very well, like we talked about, the Kaisa, the Vladimir, the Wukong. Yeah. I don't know. Gala, Gala probably needs like two or three more items, and then he needs to somehow 1v5 this game, dodging out Nautilus CC, dodging out Wukong Ultimate. Yep. Sounds pretty possible, Freak. What did you two have? They had a solid bot lane that was holding up just fine in the lane overall. Okay, yeah, you lost a summoner once in a while, but like, bot lane was going fine, mid lane was going fine. We saw Caps get around, and now 1v1, Bin and Broken Blade. Bin just, Ooh. just a bleeding. Oh, oh, Bin is not close, but Flack it in for a bit more. The flash safety's not gonna happen for anything, so Shadow's gonna come back in, finds the charm, but can't get any more done because Yankos is here, who wants to find that knockup, cannot do so. So who gets out. One for one, both top laners die. Resources were funneled in the bin. He's trying to show he can be the one to bring this game back, finds the kill. But being on G2 side of the map, they're able to rotate so quickly to answer and sadly not able to find much more. One for one, though, when you're behind. I mean, RNG will take that any day of the week. Yeah, but the problem is they've cashed in their gold leader to five stopwatches. G2 will not lose the next team fight. Yeah, it is uh, looking pretty rough. As we see here, Broken Blade actually being the one to come down because he knows he has follow-up from the rest of his team. Under Estimating the damage able to come out from Finn, but luckily Flacket, being a sniper hitting that W, makes it so he can follow through with the ultimate. And then Xiaohu just wants to get the hell out of here because he knows the rest of G2 is waiting in the wings. And now we get to try four, maybe the next Baron of the game. G2 did a really good job masterfully getting the first one. Double smite made it look pretty clean. Oh, and like you said, five stopwatches <laughs> yeah. for yeah. G2 in this fight. So, you know, they spent their gold lead, you know, uh, you know, about 4,000 of their gold lead on the stopwatches. Uh, worth it, by the way, to be clear, uh, as it's going to be hard for RNG to find anything in this fight. Yeah, and we're, we're going to see now. I mean, it really feels like your only hope is is Bin finding some kind of massive play, being able to get in on the back line with, with the TP, maybe you get a huge ultimate. I have seen him miss some of the fully stacked Qs. It's like, had those hit, maybe you could have taken down Flak in some previous fights. 
but uh, G2 aren't going to let that happen. They have full control of Vision right now. They don't have the Scuttle, but still making so that RNG aren't able to walk in. They can wait for that one to time out, just keep pushing in these waves. They don't really have too much to worry about. Running is only hard. Pope, it's one of the nice things, you know, I I'm sad that AP Kai's is gone, I really like playing her, but, um, you know, throughout the W poke, looks pretty good overall, obviously Zoe can do a bit as well, so once in a while you find yourself uh, with a man advantage because of that poke, but ultimately there's going to be a team fight to carry with the build. I'm so happy that's gone. Really? So happy that the W uh, flack it. As a bot laner, a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, you know, pretty much got cut in half. Uh, yeah. And things like A ramps, that was completely disgusting. Oh, yeah. Also, a lot more fun to see, you know, the AD Kaisa come out having to play a bit more like an assassin, get on that back line, put yourself in oh, harm's way, and really just show off the mechanical prowess that an AD carry is able to have. For G2 now, though, they don't need to exercise that mechanical prowess. They are sitting on soul point. They can wait one minute, yeah. 20 seconds, force RG to come into them. They've been winning every fight pretty handedly so far, mm -hmm. making their gold lead up to 4,000. And like we said, for RG, it's, it's pretty much the bin show. Gala, I, I don't feel like he does enough relevant damage in these fights where the, the poke is meaningful, especially up against things like the Wukong. You have yeah. the armor coming out from your passive. Broken Blade's gonna be able to heal up nice and fine. And Caps and Black are really never in hard way. Him. Wants to go in, gonna find the charm. Oh, oh there's the first stop, watch burn. But Caps doesn't have an easy way out. Has a real flash, gets over the wall, but they get him. They get the shutdown. One for one so far, that was Bin has been destroyed. Broken Blade gonna take a bit of damage, will walk out, but without Caps, that's 10 stacks off the Majai. He was at 14. And I believe this should be RNG having control over the bottom river now. Smite down for way, burns it on Scuttle, but it's going to be the short cooldown. Targum has slowed down, nearly killed. Gala can't go in for a whole lot more, but now they know they forced G2 away. 30 seconds still on this dragon, but that's still going to line up with Caps being dead. He doesn't have Spellbook, he can't get there on time. And RNG know it, they should by all rights just always get this dragon. That's the thing, right? Even though both teams did kind of take down the primary carry we've seen on the opposite side, RNG definitely having much more firepower, especially with Gala being there, able to unload those missing shots, making yeah. it show, making it so you can't walk in for free on this objective. And he's in fog. Fishing. He's in fog. He's gonna. He always, he always plays the clone. You can see he kind of shoots to the side, like in case he, you know, picks downwards the W. You know, maybe go for the shot, but you know, went backwards. Pretty smart choice here. So if Vinny's TP, he can. True shot project with a bit of poke. Okay, no, they're not on Baron. They're not doing anything cheeky here. And he's let someone solo it, right? So it's going to be Ben doing so. He TPs the bottom lane, wants to be on the map. Uh, and and covering their, their base is pretty well, right? G2 know that they can play for the credible Baron play. So RNG have to kind of cover that one. They let Ben solo it. I think both players, both teams really played this macro quite well yeah, in terms of what their careful, options though. were. So RNG, G2 going to try. RNG, no TP though on the Gwen. So if G2 can find a really nice, decisive turn, they should yeah. be able to take the fight. Yeah, because that half though is a bit of a danger. Way sticking around there. 4K health on Baron. They have to be careful about this timing here. And Ben going to be here soon enough. And G2 flint. They say, we're not willing to play for this. We're not willing to flip it. Yanko so low, oh, jumps the wall. That's a huge stun. They're going to knock down Shao, who rooted in place and caps. Gets his revenge. Broken Blade, Zonius, but Broken Blade may not have a way out. They get him back again. Soul laner's dead now. Once each of both sides, the re-engage gives a crash. Shut down into Gala. Min going to be next. The bot lane is in shambles. A double for Yanko. So now they're going to go for a little bit more. And Flack going to free fire on the bin. Another death onto the Gwen. And G2 going to get the Baron after all. And Flack is repositioning in these fights with that ultimate. And his flash have been so beautiful to make sure he doesn't go down. G2, like you said, are going to get the Baron. I love that Caps is still hunting for way. And G2 just continuing to run that through with these fights. Rookies, man. 22-year-old rookie, but a rookie nonetheless. This man is so good. Flackett is outstanding and has been all MSI. Uh, great scouting, obviously, coming out of the ERLs. Beautiful stuff. And uh, G2 have put, them, put themselves together an amazing roster. Yeah, we're going to go back to how the fight happens. Like we said, Gwen not able to be here, but RNG still having enough poke to look for the contest to, to, to posture them off the objective. Xiao here trying to find his way onto Cavs, but instantly Targamas and Co. kind of turning to make sure he's able to do so. Way tries to find his way into the back line. We see Broken Blade zoning them off once again on the opposite side. But here really feels like the, the turning point for me where we see Bin able to come in. He's going to try and find his way onto Flackin. The stopwatches are just so annoying for RNG to deal with, but able to flash out from danger. You have all the damage there. The damage dealers from RNG are already dead, yep. and that's just a fight for G2. I mean, really, really beautiful stuff. So, correct myself, 21 for Flackin. Uh, had my memories wrong, but I mean, regardless, like, this is just really impressive because to me, the history of G2, if, for those who are G2 fans more recently, the start of G2's international career was really bad. 
Their first MSI, G2 and 8 memes, if you remember those, like it was it was a rough start for G2, Worlds looked bad as well, they kept missing, and then just banger after banger. The last few years for G2 has been, like, they're clearly the best team in Europe, they're one of the top teams internationally, they're so absurd, and it, it, their talent scouting's been so damn good as well, right? Like, you know, Broken Blade, Flash off TSM, comes over, he's been outstanding, Flack and Targumus weren't in the LEC for the last three years, I mean, Flack is a full rookie, Targumus played one split three years ago, so straight, straight out of the ERLs, basically, as far as I'm concerned. G2 scouted them out, grabs them, and this is the team that comes back to MSI and are going to be the only undefeated team at MSI. And not being afraid to break apart a star-studded roster, right? Yeah. Reckless, wonder, like, these types of players that are so good, that are yeah. so heralded. I mean, even just the hit in terms of, like, fan perception you would take, G2 said, no, we are aiming for a trophy, we're aiming for more titles, they were willing to do it, and at least so far, it's only best of ones, but it's paying off against the best teams in the world. Yeah, and they have looked impressive. Nice kickback, though, could be a kill, but Yankos had his stopwatch. Way will not not yet dive with the charm lands. Shao who's there? Back into the air. Tries to get the spells off, and they will get one from Ben. Now Gala <laughs> running for his life. There's been so many narrow margins, but RNG get the one for zero and have time to reset. That's the one thing you gotta give RNG in this game so far. They've always looked for the angle to find the engage, to find the pick. Way constantly waiting behind G2 to find these kicks into the rest of his team. <laughs> I mean, Gala there somehow luckily able to get away, yeah. making it so they don't lose too much, but G2 still able to finish off that turret and get out scot-free. Now, thank you, Glacial Shroud. I assume he took some physical damage at some point in that fight, and that armor did make the difference. Obviously on Hex Drinker now as well, so that will help next time around when Caps wants him. And we're gonna see here Way being very patient all game, looking for these opportunities. Yep, uses the E to reveal, waits for him to, to use that ult show himself once again. I thought here the sword go down for RG because they didn't find their way onto one of the key carries, but still Xiaohu able to hit the charm was the difference maker in being able to take that one away. And Flakken, it's just so sad not able to finish off Gala with that Q, making it so RNG are able to find the one kill on the Yankos. I was told six HP was the count on Gala, so real low, uh, but made it out in the end. And you know, anytime you say, hey, two armor nerfs don't matter. There you go, two armor would have been the difference maker there. So uh, once in a while you have those big deals. Now G2 of course still feeling great. Once again, playing for Dragon Soul. Mountain Soul is gonna be so much for them if it happens. Uh, Scuttle does belong to RNG, makes it a bit tougher to navigate. They can't play full Fog of War, but G2 should feel comfortable. I mean, especially now, right? We see Flacken oh, coming out the GA. Bin gonna look for a bit of engage. Jumps right on in, a lot of damage. Target with just gets so oh, wow. he does. Beautiful start here. Will it be enough for the rest of it? Broken Blade trying to buy some time. Ming gonna jump right back out. We'll stay alive, but Bin has to be careful. Going right back in. Will gone for the knockup on a one. Stopwatch burn, and down goes Tauhu. Will they trade it back? Yo, he's healing. He's staying oh, alive. Two shot barrage. Gala stays alive. Cap finds one way on the way out. Has a Guardian Angel, though. Flash in. It's gonna be enough for Caps. Burns the Zonia's outer glass yet again. Gala played to his limits, but ignited and falls. And G2 mop the floor with RNG. What was essentially a 4v5. G2 were able to turn it around. Great play coming out from Yankos. Flacken once again is so damn fearless, just constantly going in. He had the GA, he knew he was fine, and they took RNG down. Absolutely beautiful. If you want to see what the best team in the world plays like, you better take notes. It's MSI and G2. Question, maybe maybe looking at some plucky underdogs, some some buffaloes, some PSG talents. We'll but look tomorrow. I was gonna say.